Where is everybody? Here I am. Thank you. Somebody else hey, Jennifer. Hey, Karen. This, this we can start. We have a quorum. Hey, Dory. Hey, Ellie. Okay. All right. I'd like to call the February 28, 2013 Board of Directors of Community Television of Santa Cruz County to order. And we have a roll call, please. James Fisher? Absent. Tess Fitzgerald? Absent. Denise Gallant? Absent. Here. Keith Gudger? Here. Joe Hall? Here. Karen Machado? Present. Here. Jennifer Pittman? Here. Matilda Rand? Here. Dory Steinman? Here. Lou Tuasto? Absent. Adam Wade? Absent. Do we have a quorum? Yes. We do. Six is a quorum. Oh, woo, lucky. Thank you. We have a quorum. I would like to start off the meeting with a, a moment of silence. Sorry. To honor Sergeant Butch Baker and Detective Elizabeth Butler. Thank you. We begin with oral communication. Uh, there is one other announcement with respect to this. Yes. Yeah, just to let the board know, um, our uh, production staff are currently working on a memorial uh, for CTV in honor of both of these officers and in memory of them. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank wonderful. You. I would like to move to oral communications then. This is a time. <clears throat> members of the audience to address the board and please keep your statements to less than three minutes. Is there anyone who would like to address the board on a non-agenda item? Well, hello there. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, Sandy Lee, community producer, and I'm here today for uh, some very important issues. You know, we're looking at the funding changing and rules changing and access changing and cost changing and I wanted to take a second today, and I've uh, asked Allie to pass it to each of you a uh, short proposal that I'd like to make, and I'm hoping that uh, when I'm done that this can be put on to the next calendar so we can discuss this formally. Anyway, this is an outline that we can try to keep community access alive and thriving for 20 hours a week. What I'm hoping to do through a combination of volunteerism and fundraising create the funding to uh, staff a part-time access facilitator. Uh, we found out the rough range of that, and uh, if you look at this, it's about $25,000 a year, give or take. That's actually kind of high compared to what I was told, but things happen and, you know, things change, and who knows what's going to happen with the taxes. But anyway, to help fund this, I proposed, as I have in the past, a series of fundraisers, one to go each quarter, starting with our bowling event that we should be having in a couple of weeks. Strike! <laughs> we didn't do that. But we're not too late to do a pledge drive like KQED, where we ask our producers, hey, how about making a greatest hit show, come in and talk about how cool community TV is, and ask people to send us money. I mean, it wouldn't take much. I think just about all of our producers would be game to do that. Funding probably won't be great, but it's better than nothing. Uh, a costume dinner dance around Halloween time. To take the normal dinner dance thing to a new level and maybe do it like a Roaring Twenties costume event where we really have some fun. And open that up to the public, get some good bands. I think I might be able to find one or two and make some money. I mean, come on. And then my Black Friday telethon. It was a year ago when I came to the management and said, I've got this great idea for a fundraiser. And here we are a year later. Please discuss this with me. Please. The members demand our chance to keep the membership alive. You keep shutting us down, which makes us feel very, very bad. And now also, we can do a sliding scale as far as studio equipment rentals, usage, something that's fair, not outrageous, 
But also for the low income people, we can accent that with a volunteer program, where if they participate and volunteer at the station, not doing programs, but keeping the station going, working the front desk, sending out mailers, calling people about programs, doing all the stuff we need to do when people are at work, we can do in the evening with volunteers. I think this is a really good program that we should be thinking about no matter what happens. We need volunteers to be active with our station. A nonprofit cannot exist without volunteers. I was the volunteer coordinator at the Red Cross during Hurricane Katrina. I had a thousand volunteers coming through that door willing to do whatever. Now granted, we're not the Red Cross. We might have 30 or 40 people that would be willing to put in four hours, but that'll keep public access afloat. And that's what I'm here today to do, is keep community involvement in community TV. I don't want to see Orwellian government TV. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Any other public comment? Okay. I, I that. We have a consent agenda. And the only item on the consent agenda is to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of January 24th. Um, was, was there a typo in that, Lynn? There, there is a typo. If you'd go to item five, um, it should be severance um, on approved under five approved. It should be severance. And then um, after that, it should be for the employees affected by the transition and strike the affected employees affected by the transition. Oh. Strike affected, I'm sorry. It's effectively done. Any other comments on the minutes for the consent agenda item? Okay, I'll move the consent agenda with the corrections made to the minutes. No, second then. Is there any comment? Okay. Uh, then I'd like to call a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Yeah. Okay, the first, the next regular agenda item is discussion re, the revised 2012-13 budget. Now, this budget was discussed in the Finance Committee, and the Finance Committee uh, recommends to the board uh, that that be passed, but I would like to open that up for discussion. Is there any discussion from the audience? Maybe you have a uh, staff report first, so if there's anything you want to add to it that the audience would need to know before we talk about it, just a thought. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the um, compelling items in this budget, first of all, let me remind you, we did a bifurcated budget last year, last fiscal year, because we intended to merge mid-year. We've now taken that budget and put it into an annual budget, revised it so that you can see what the actual exp expenditures are. And the two items that you'll see in this revised budget is um, $155,000 um, pursuant to the release of county funds to purchase the equipment for access, the CMAP fields that needs to be happening here, as, as, as does the county. And then an additional um, 29,000, well, actually $27,000 of county funds, um, which also would be pursuant to the county releasing those funds uh, for an additional contract with CMAP to do the, the quick turnaround the county has asked us to do around getting this equipment set up and uh, functioning by July 1st. So again, the two items you'll see that are in addition to our uh, funding, now, again, we, we've gone through this budget um, we've shown the positions that have been frozen, so everything here is what it is today. Um, but the but the additional items, the ones I just articulated, and that's $155,000 for the equipment and the additional $29,000, 2,000 of which we have in our budget, 27,000 of which we're asking the county for. Okay. Is there any other discussion here at the board? Okay. <laughs> Can I have a motion? I move that we accept the revised 2012-2013 budget. I second that. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes. 
Okay. Now we need to discuss the contract with CMAP, and that again will go to Lynn for discussion. Um, we sent this out with the packet, and I did find a typo that I fixed, and, and I think I fixed it and put it in mine, and now I won't know which one it was, but I'll probably can find it. Yes, on, on the last paragraph before it gets to CTV understands and agrees to, um, under that top bullet on what would, I think it's on the third page that you have where it says May, June 2013, it should read creating a new development strategy, not creating new a development policy, a strategy. So we'll be changing that on the contract we sign. Um, and then this contract is pursuant again to the county's uh, request for us to expedite uh, what they consider um, post IFCA. Um, they've asked us to move faster to get this equipment in, to start to do scales of economy. And so that's why we're asking for some additional time from CMAP to do that. Their IT specialist and some of um, Kathy's time and some of their programmer time. Okay. Thanks for the time that you've put into this. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, I don't, is there any comments from the audience about the contract? I just have some hopes and prayers through this negotiation process that once we do this merger, that perhaps some of the resources uh, of CMAP will become available to some of the members here at CTV while we go through this transition process that's foreseen. That they have a brand new studio and brand new editing equipment. And if we're going to shut this down and plan on moving, will our members, since this is a new organization, be able to utilize that equipment? I would think that that would be a given, but uh, you know, unless we actually put that into some sort of terminology in the contract, it might slip through the cracks. So I'm hoping that we can somehow include our transition time to utilize both facilities. And I'm also wondering, if will we be able to show our programming there now in Gilroy if we submit our programming? Is that all part of the membership? Do we have to pay a separate membership now to be part of CMAP and their programming? So I, I hope these issues could be addressed in this contract. I don't know if they are. I haven't seen it. This is the first I've heard of it. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. I'd like to point out that this contract is through June sure. of this year, so it doesn't cover the transition period. But I, 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 I really appreciate your bringing up those points in this public forum about uh, potential sharing of equipment in both places and definitely a playback. Right. And, and to the best of my knowledge, uh, CMAP has been welcoming anyone's uh, submissions. You do not have to be a member at CMAP in order, you don't even have to be a member at CTV in order to, to present a program for play. So it's the same uh, with CMAP. So by all means, uh, look at all your programs and start submitting them to, uh, to CMAP. They'll be welcoming them. Great. Yeah. And if I might, um, um, Sandra brought this to my attention a couple of weeks ago, and, and I have been having those discussions with Kathy Bisbee, and I, I just want you to know that we have been having the discussions. Thank you. So I will bring the discussion back to the board. Is there any discussion on the board about uh, the contract before us? No, I think it looks good. I think it's well thought out. Okay. I, I want to be clear that the contract is pursuant to county funding. So, so yes. I just want to make sure everybody understands mm -hmm. that. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Do you want a motion? I would love to have a motion, please. I uh, move that the board of directors approve the contract with CMAP as presented and with the modification uh, provided by the executive director. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. And now we have a report of the executive director regarding meeting with Cabrillo College. 
Uh, just before I get into that, uh, I believe the board members each received some correspondence, uh, anonymous correspondence regarding um, the Warriors games being televised on CTV. And I wanted to remind the board that we had this discussion several months ago when the Warriors were revving up to, revving up, maybe that's not the, <laughs> revving up, I guess, um, to, uh, to open uh, up for the games. Um, they're affiliated with the MBA, and at the time we had the discussions with them, th they aren't um, able to provide those to us. They're, they're actually being televised on other stations. Uh, but I'm more than glad to have a, 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 an additional conversation with them if the board so wishes. But I just wanted to let you know that we did have initially a discussion with them. Did anybody respond to the email? That we received. I never, I never got the email. I never got the email. Oh, I thought all board members. I got thought it was email. sent out to well, the whole we'll, board. We'll make sure every board member gets a copy of the email, and okay. um, and then um, I'm going to follow up on it unless the board doesn't want me to. I think it would be good to just ask them what's happening. We have been working with them on some other issues, but uh, mm -hmm. not specifically that one. Okay. I think it would be great if you could one follow up with the warriors, but also two if you could reply to the email that was sent to the entire board and just explain to them the situation. Sure. Thank you. Okay, we have been meeting with Rock Fotenhauer. Uh, Keith and I had met with him on one occasion, um, and then we recently met with them again. Um, he and John, and Keith John's last name is going to slip in my mind. Uh, he's from um, their media um, department. Uh, Keith and I met with them a couple weeks ago. They have an active interest in working with us, um, and we're trying to sort out or fetter out what that might look like. But I think as we move into post um, DIFCA, these kinds of liaisons and collaborations are going to be very important for us. Um, and I've been very pleased with their active interest in coming once and then coming back to us. They want to have additional conversations, and um, um, they were very open to all kinds of ideas, including perhaps something on their campus. So. Um, um, I just want to share with you that we're continue to have those negotiations and working with them. And as soon as the dust settles on on this budget year, we plan to continue to have those discussions and hope to develop something for next fiscal year that makes sense to us. Um, it would be nice, I think, for the community to have uh, a place in Santa Cruz. And Scotts Valley has a place. Watsonville has a place. And that's what they talk about is maybe a Santa Cruz location where they can do some classes. Um, they, they are impacted by the same Highway 1 corridor that each one of us have to rifle with on a daily basis. They're asking maybe that perhaps Santa Cruz could have something, and it would be, a, I, I think it would be a great relationship. So I want to let you know that we continue to have those discussions, and we'll continue to have more of them. I agree with that. See us pursue whatever we can with Cabrillo. I think there's uh, uh, something that can, I think, you know, turn into something real well long term uh, for us, especially with uh, the possibility of having the kids get uh, some credit uh, and maybe have some kind of developed uh, curriculum. I've had some conversations also with Cabrillo, but um, I'm in process of trying to uh, connect with some folks up at UCSC. Has there anything been done there with a, kind of a parallel type program, uh, or have we explored what might be done there possibly in the same way? I, I, I have not. Um, I've been up the university. We haven't had a specific discussion about uh, what we might do with UCSC, but we have had it with Cabrillo, but not with UCSC. Not, not me personally. Is that They're, possible? Could we do that? Well, I, I'm not Gumby. <laughs> and I guess part of this is I need to be honest because, because we're working with Cabrillo. And when, we, when this post ifca stuff slows down a little bit, I think it's perfectly acceptable. And I think it's actually reasonable to start to reach out to our entire community about how we, but, but I don't want to commit to something that, that I can't do right now. And I, that's what I'm concerned about, is that um, I think it absolutely makes sense. We just haven't had that opportunity yet. But I'll put it, I'll, I'll, I, I will get around to it. Good, thank you. Um, I actually, I made some, of, uh, we had some meetings with Mary Ann when she was here up mm -hmm. there, and it's a real complex organization. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we concluded that we needed to focus elsewhere for the time being. Uh, and they also, Cabrillo's, I think, ideal, just like you say, because it's connected to the community. The UC uh, is connected to a whole system that seems to kind of have its own life. and. 
how they interface with the community. We were basically shunted off to the uh, uh, extension program. And at that point, we just gave up. And, mm -hmm. But I think at some point it would be fun to re-engage. Mm -hmm. It's bigger, there are different people there now. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was quite time intensive for virtually nothing but referrals and emails. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. Uh, uh, we're, we're on reports and uh, a little update on UCSC. Um, SCTV is the student programming up there, and they really go on a roller coaster, but they're back um, and much stronger. And we just got a phone call, and they want us to carry their programming again. So we have a link. We just flip the switch. So we will be getting programming from UCSC. Okay. Nice. But, you know, what you're talking about is a lot more The credit issues. But, but it's just, yeah. yeah. But it's a step in the right direction. Uh, the main report, I just wanted to give you an update. The website redesign is pretty much complete. We plan on launching on Monday. Okay. So hopefully we will have a nice. new snappy looking website. Uh, I really want to thank Nick Brandt. He has, he's the new IT guy, in case you haven't met him yet, uh, from CMAP. And he's really been a breath of fresh air. As you know, we've been uh, missing Craig Judson quite a bit for a while. So Nick has now stepped up and helped with a lot and was instrumental in getting the, the website up and running. So a big thank you to Nick for that. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Ron Holman, staff. Thanks, Ron. Let me just add to Ron's comments. Um, Ron and Kathy have also been very active in this process, um, and and I, I think it speaks to teamwork when when you talk about us getting this far this fast with this website. So I, I there's more to thank than uh, one person, and I want to make sure that uh, Ron and Kathy also get it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Were there any other issues um, before we adjourn to the closed session? nothing on the agenda. Um, I don't know if we'll come back live or not, so I would like to take this opportunity to thank the volunteers and interns that helped televise tonight's show. Karen Scott, David Wooden, Veta Navarro, Jenny O'Dell, John Maurer, and if there's anyone else, I'm sorry. But thank you for helping. Yeah. Um, Somebody take notes if there's a motion. I know I'm not, but I'm looked at. You're not.